you know, there's no English blood in me, you know what I mean? I don't have to prove that to anybody else, it's a fact. My ancestors are from here, that's a fact. Neil made a dialogue on the facts. He made a dialogue on the facts. He made a dialogue on the Cree. He made a dialogue on the Mohukan. He made a dialogue on the Dini Atta. Brishta Urnda. How many special people change? How many lives are living strange? Where were you while we were getting high? There was a certain attitude that suggested or prevailed that the Irish, particularly Irish men, were troublesome. The music that the Irish brought with them had a certain rebelliousness about it, a certain defiance about it. You know, so a lot of the songs are quite sad, a lot of them are quite defiant. The Irish have been fighting in so many wars for God knows since chieftain times. And I, you know, I wasn't there, but I reckon a few of us were banging drums and making music and drinking and having the crack, and I reckon the Irish invented rock and roll. Hare Scale Oasis, Noel August Liam Gala. Rubu was told you a mamachinier. Kahed of Imar Hyan Scribe by Kunior and Merkur Erenoch, Evier Hor Seal Nisdor. Isn't sure a honic Peggy Sweeney for Lost the Shaskabi, Eshta a Bale and Nakale Bale Kahele Gunda for Yoa Ogor. Isn't sure a Hatshile, a Gasafoth she Tommy Gallagher, as Dolieg a Gunda in the Me. My mother was born in a place called Moldog, which is midway between Charlestown and Smithfield. And she was one of 11. So, with her two bedrooms in a, in a thatch cottage that fell down in around the 50s, I think, or 60s even. She went to Manchester in the early 60s, where she met my dad at an Irish club. And then in 66, Mr. Perfection was born, which is me, and 67. Noel come along and then 72 Liam and that's kind of it really. I would like to leave this city This old town don't smell too pretty And I can feel the worn inside Running around my mind Well Oasis again come from a very strong Irish background in Manchester. All five original members of Oasis came from Irish Catholic families in Manchester. They were all involved in different ways with performing traditional music, playing Gaelic football, attending Irish social clubs, certainly attending the Catholic Church as well, visiting Ireland a lot. They spent a lot of time in Ireland. <laughs> Tushkin 
Vin tarigat gaanach. Vin no hon arigat jakab hon hirt de wala beter go. Kun dai wio er kurter go muinter Peggy Sweeney. Kolla haura fa kop de shachtene. Our uncle Paddy used to take us to Ireland in his car. He used to drive. He was a miner. He's obviously from Charlestown, but he went to work in Doncaster in the mines. And he used to drive from Yorkshire to Manchester every summer and Christmas and take us in his car. And we'd never have seen Ireland if it wasn't for him. Six weeks, every summer holiday, off you go to Mayo. We'd never seen the likes of nettles and peels <laughs> and, and stacks of hay and all that. And she, and she was determined to give us a bit of Irish culture because we because we were used to like concrete and flats and stuff. And it was a bit of a culture shock for about the first maybe about the first four or five years. But we just grew to love it, you know. I mean, still, I still do to this day. Skimming stones on the lakes, and the river, and. You know, going to the bog, the day out was the bog. Your tea would be a spud and a little... Don't use a lot of that, but spud and butter and, I don't know, a bit of bacon. Bacon and cabbage. Yeah, we were poor and a poor man, but yeah, it was great. I loved it. Noel Gallagher always talks about how it was such a world away from um, uh, his, his upbringing in Burnage um, in Manchester because um, he had a very rough upbringing and um, uh, they were profoundly affected by um, their father's behaviour. I think their father was an alcoholic. Oasis constantly talk about how difficult and abusive and violent their father was, but constantly talk about how loving they might They have a very sentimental and loving attitude towards their mother. Yeah, yeah, me mum's my best mate, me mammy. Yeah, I don't, don't know where I'd be without her, she's great. Even when we had nothing, she made sure we were well presented and we had everything. She used to knit clothes for us when she couldn't afford to buy them, she used to knit them herself. So we knew we were different when we got a skill and, I don't know, the first... You come back after summer holidays and your first year, new year at school and the rest of the kids would have pristine jumpers bought from, I don't know, the store and we'd have these knitted things. And they were actually warmer. For Noel and Paul Gallagher, you know, they were old enough, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, when the dad was still living with them, he'd, he'd like, uh, get them to carry his record boxes, because he used to DJ at all the Irish clubs and Irish pubs around Manchester, so he used to do St Kentigan's, English Martyrs, St Brendan's, uh, the 32 Club, you know, so he'd do all of them, and it, they'd carry his record boxes for him, and, and obviously he'd be playing a, a mixture of, kind of, the odd pop hit, some 60s stuff, but then it'd be all stuff like, you know, the town I knew so well, Fields of Athen Rye, Raglan Road, you know, a lot of maudlin type stuff, and then, you know, songs like, like The Siege of Ennis and, you know, and doing weddings and those sort of Irish parties as well. We had strong musical music in our family. My father was DJ, country western, mind you, but still a DJ, so music was always around us. My, my mother reckons it comes from her granny in Mayo, and she was uh, apparently a great whistler. So she'd whistle and everyone would hear her feels away. I don't know if that counts as talent, but apparently that's my mother said that's where we got it from. Bajigar and the Sassney Hain, the Dinagar Bas Sassney and Winchester, near a and tradition that comes to Glong among Irish Kill, a false Natiha, some Gra Tiha, via Maher Hain, a Kassam Buska Kill, via Eher. Uh, Noel Gallagher, Tommy Gallagher, we we fresh in a casa bus bus kill fresh in agus and we in uh, guitar a fresh in. So we fall we mask a ga pubble ernoch er a gyol hain. Agus we in kill bio parchach Cecil lehu of a hakab. What a lot of Irish immigrants brought with them was the idea of entertaining, the idea of the noble call of your party piece, so on and so forth. So you were suggested, perhaps, you know, to say a poem, to read a, you know, to recite something, to sing a song. But there was a rich cultural idiom within even an imagined perception of identity that Irish immigrants in the United Kingdom had. And their conception of Ireland was perhaps passed on to their offspring in forms of injustice, or social injustice, or perhaps in the idea of the necessity to sing or to produce or to use an art form in a way of kicking against the system. Slip inside the eye of your mind. Don't 
Call Noel Gallagher, the Steam Gallagher, Nourish, and he's so good. Anna Kodam is the talk torn, a better lay, his mahori, as the Irish clubs come out. I guess Kaminic, Maris Olding, being sing song, Darren Nahia. I guess being our Gokanya piece, I kind of act on a lyric here, all as a Gokanya, I guess the Rish, Ton Collective Vown, I guess Gokanya, Tok La Kayla, a Connell and a Kayla, I guess Kaynock Row, better chunk or more, a Kyo Lernock, air steel. Get up in the fuck, take that look from off your face. The garage in your liam of a thacker and seal, walk mounted Gallagher with the Bruach Walla Burnage and Mamchen, Agus is a Malishacha, Noel, Liam Agus Paul and Noigia. The Pobble Lodge at Gwellach of Burnage and Nam, Agus er knows forward the Boschke of Hale Ernacha, the Nagoni Hall, one the Jerahari and Lassus and Glob Gwellach or Heath Social Kaja. Dimmer and Shur Gallagher, Pell Gwellach, Lena Widden Archul, St. Oshins. O'Sheens was actually set up in 1904. The club originated from Irish immigrants who came over from Ireland looking for work back in the uh, early 1900s. The Gallagher brothers, uh, Noel uh, was a little bit older than me. He played, with, he played with my brother and I played a few times with Noel. Noel was a, a very feisty character, as was Liam. I played with Paul as well. At one stage, there was the three Gallagher brothers. Um, Paul, who we had a nickname as Bod was, when he was playing with us, um, and Liam and Noel. Very, very strong, um, liked to get involved in, in the game. A lot of their friends at school, when they were in Burnage, um, you know, would have been playing Gaelic football with us at the time. And I think it was them who, who encouraged them to come into the Gaelic, you know, the Gaelic scene as well, and to represent O'Sheens. Well, we started off the under nines, and we went through under 13, 15, minors, and in 83 we played at Cop Park. as a challenge against Kilmichael Crokes, me and Noel. There was a couple of times uh, when they had a, f a few discussions with the referee on certain um, uh, altercations, so we just say. Um, but no, I think uh, over the period of time, uh, uh, my recollection and, and playing with them and playing with the brother Paul was that uh, they were all, I was always glad they were on my side anyway, should we say that? That's kind of one over on people. You ever played at Crow Park? No. Well, shut up then. I mean, playing Gaelic football in Manchester in the 1980s is a fairly shows how invested you are. In, in certain forms of Irish culture. One of the problems is with some of the Irish is they do crack, certainly over here, what I call the plastic paddydom thing. I'm not having a go at them, but it is like they create this sort of bubble of Irishness. And, it, and it's kind of, well, what is it? You know, it's easy to prick. You think, well, it's all based on some strange idea of what being Irish was in the 1950s when your folks might have come over from County Mayo or whatever. So the song Whatever has been seen certainly by Noel's brother Paul, as a lyric that documents Noel's rejection of a fairly narrow version of Irishness which Noel felt was being imposed on him by his father. So Paul says that in his teens, uh, Noel's father would take him around these Irish clubs in Manchester and kind of force him to speak to Irish kids rather than English kids and kind of force a certain version of Irish culture on him and that Noel felt stifled and shackled by this and therefore wrote this song, whatever, you know, I'm free to do whatever I want, whatever I choose and I'll sing the blues if I want. You know, almost saying, you know, he'll sing kind of rock and blues music rather than going towards Irish traditional culture. I'm free to be whatever I, whatever I choose and I'll sing the blues if I Agus e na iagoir chá Noel Gallagher lán a lé a wallach an a chiomra a gheist a fleiciol agus ag fóilm na cordi ar an gitar. Bí an fhásagir da Beatles agus e a fós an ís, ach bá grúp a chiol as mamchan le frevach a gwellacha a sprag búan na comadóirach da an. Noel, as a teenager, was at home watching Top of the Pops and saw Johnny Marr performing This Charming Man in 1983 and uh, decided there and then he was going to teach himself the guitar. It's interesting that the father was the one that did produce the acoustic guitar in the house, which Noel duly picked up. And I think it was a result of that kind of introspection that he had, which may have come from 
the problems of adjusting to what would ultimately become a broken family um, helped him to focus on music. We had our mother to hold us together, so we were, you know, we were sound. Probably when they got divorced in 86, it's kind of, people didn't get divorced, you know? Irish families didn't get divorced. You were like, you know, as my gran would say, your major bed's a lion, kind of thing. And it was the, the unspoken, um, you know, part of life. You don't get divorced, where are you gonna go? I remember it, I remember it well. My father went out for the ride, I don't know where he went, and um, my mum had it planned, and she was just, we disappeared. She had a house, and off we went. We left him with carpet, or no carpet, actually. He's probably still got no carpet, I don't know. I've not been back, but... Yeah, it's the unspoken Irish family bit. You never leave your father, but we did, and thank God, you know. I'm free. Caho Noel Gallagher and Marcus Squellen and Arasha Hoodley and the Jaguish, a squash and nobber, a white hand to Gala Ochula. But Splodra had the Amanhonegan arm, Gwen and Rasima Kuigo, the uncultured Manchester at Tasu Harter and Hassi and the nightclub, a gusvi group in Lou, Bower and Nost the Stone Roses, Happy Mondays, a gusin spiral carpets at Chaff and Keen. I first met Noel about this period, about 1988. I used to work at the top of this road. There's an area at the top of this road that all, just all belonged to uh, the gas board, or British Gas, as it's now known. And Noel used to work in this little porter cabin, in this hut. He used to give out tools to people. Somebody needed a certain drill for a job, he'd give them the tool. And a lot of the time, he sat in there bored, so he used to take his acoustic guitar in. That's when he learned to write songs inside there. He introduced himself to me in the Hacienda and came up and said he was a bit of a fan of the band. And we started to hang out together, um, go to warehouse parties. The rave scene was just happening. He auditioned for the Inspiral Carpets, and you know, because he had no experience and his vocals weren't strong enough, they basically turned him down. He came down, turned up late. We said, do you know our songs? He said, yeah, yeah, I know all your songs. I said, what do you want to do? He said, uh, theme from Cow, theme from Cow's instrumental. So we did it and uh, he got all the words wrong, all five of them, he made his own words up. So our keyboard player gave him this uh, track that he just wrote and Noel got the lyrics and started reading them. He got a few lines down and he just went, started laughing. He said, this is rubbish. Who's wrote this? I could do better than this. We didn't know that at the time that he could, but uh, our keyboard player was uh, sat there looking at me as if to say, get him out, get this scally out of here now. So after the audition, we quite liked him. He was quite a sort of funny character. So when we told Noel we had to break it to him gently, we said, look, mate, you've not got the job as singer, but you can come, our, come and be our roadie. And he was like, yeah, OK, how much do I get? Can't really afford to pay you. I think we give him three pound a day and a pot noodle. It's there if you chunk or more, I can trade for in air now. My tell him she on quid. Fwyn Arnell, Kjol, Agus and Gano, Agus and Fulchilan could group be Kjol, it's there because you could have a few in the Frank and Walters. Agus, Agus and Vichy are calm, Cortland and Spiral Carpets, Fwyn Deshke are right, Kjol, Shkriv. Noel's already writing songs before the Spiral Carpets, but when he tours the Spiral Carpets, he used a lot of the downtime after the sound checks to have little jams on the equipment because he could play the drums, bass and the guitar. And with the rest of the road crew, they used to have like a bit of an ad hoc jamming band and he would try out some of the songs on that. We were in Europe one time, I think we were in Germany. Uh, Munich possibly, and he rang home, spoke to his mum, and he said, what's our Liam up to? And she said, Liam's joined a band, and Noel creased up laughing. He, he, he didn't take it seriously at all. And the rest of the tour, he said, I can't wait to see them. So we returned home, and he went to see them play. And uh, afterwards, Liam said, well, you manage us? And he went, no, no, you're rubbish. And he said, what about joining? He said, right, I'll join on one condition, you play my songs. And they're all like, yeah. And a presence right, the, right, right from the stars. <laughs> I think Oasis, you know, at the time it came through, although now it seems obvious, it wasn't a hip sound. London was all about new wave of new wave, i.e. retread punk. I mean, I gave Oasis their very first TV when they were unknown, on the word, and it took off from there. But I, I knew that if people could hear it, they'd like it. I know I'm not going to be able to do it. I know I'm not going to be able to do it. I know I'm not going to be able to do it. I know I'm not going to be able to do it. I know I'm not going to be able to do it. I know I'm not going to be able to do it. I know I'm not going to be able to do it. I know
Ludegan special not fade lot few curious carathy and a ver a crud nor hussy lim a conan lyrically shin sprag shake a kenya a vegage to glow a gus fish grief for a ver and a coney a monken uh car in a knock round more and dash nagan now a gus fish grief we docus fish extreme if we a vet mark rock and roll star August 94, they were millionaires. It was like surreal. It was like a juggernaut and nothing could stop them. You know? Off they went. It's just rock and roll. It's just rock and roll. It's just rock and roll. Monaghan, Ernie, a Hogmud Jorinhain, Manchester Irish, Manc Irish, a Hogmud Jane, Mar Nero Mud, Ni Sassna of the Omen, Agus Ni 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 Ernie of the Omen, be much Lavalach, Idrin Da, Trav Maladera. But then there is the other side as you grow older and you go, Who am I? Because you know you wasn't born in Ireland and you know you didn't grow up in Ireland. But you grew up in England with a strong Irish connection. And you're not English. And technically, you're not Irish. So what are you? My brothers, they don't, I mean, they don't hold Irish passports. I mean, they know that, you know, their mother and father are Irish, but they never, they went the other way. They sort of sit in the middle. My own feeling is that, you know, uh, identity is a movable feast, you know? Um, their experiences, their, their, you know, their passport is British, you know, their lineage is Irish. It is up to them to what extent, that, you know, they, they do that. If anybody deserves the right to be able to use both the, the Union Jack and the Tricolour in equal measure, is a family who's grown up Irish in England. It's kind of grow quite a lot of either in the Gallagher's August on Tier Show. And it's Queen of a Vegasia Glen Noel Gallagher and Kader of Vishare Radio, if you want a kind of day fanning, August Dorcha and Eha Rivish and Vulchilla Far, August Dorch and Farish and Low, you're the best Irish band since the Smiths. So, we were a fad sauce at Glockalo, my Erinig, August Sheelum Groshishin, Ansler, Egna Kyol Kermica, Kama, August Shasan Shishin and Maka more and more, better as a point in Egypt no Kashe, the Noel Gallagher, Casa, Wonderwall, Le Dirk on guitar, a Hainer and Stacha. I was Peter Sween of Sheer Vishikasula, Tok Torna, Monken, Snashakta, the Egderin Hia, Farla, Acoustic Guitar, Akan Diffric, Navi, Demila, Dene, Lahar, and Shaw. Hey and Noel Gallagher in the land to show. She and Girl Rudd again, special dog is Drew to allow. Oh, even Codra Vitalge let Len look Len in on shot in Aaron. I guess Baker fell at rock. Tenshi Shin Shear a quick Irish there and Noel Gallagher. I guess Antahi of the gag false in his and Monka and I guess Dolores Rash quick Charles Sam. Come on. The Oasis of the Lonyark Banyar, Achaminic, Yanachan Kaiser of Achlanach, a beard no legus Liam Gallagher, Debon as a good skill in the Kyol. Bosaw Rail to Beast Najirahoraha, Agus Scalach Nameon, Solus or Gak Kame Hokidish, Gominic, Er Valley Joltaha. A man who shall pass you is Buddha Harloch and invert to Rahar Bader than the Damadish. Three degrees, car deg number Shinjak. We shall shot Tarlo, Oscorn and Meon, her father was Oscorn and Teal Ward. I can see the commands now with fifty. I can spend the time to three. Ah, ah, we should ah run off. I understand that Liam was nineteen, and he was a millionaire at twenty-one. So he's gone from this cocky kid 
to to a big star, you know. I mean, I wasn't on the road with him, so God help Noel, we had to put up with him for that long, but I'm sure they managed. Yeah, there's, you know, fighting and arguing and this and that, but that's, you get that. He's a younger brother. There's six years between them. You know, they used to share a room, bunk beds. They're both very smart, you know. I mean, Liam's much smarter than his media image portrays. But Noel, Noel is, is double smart, you know, and he's very good at his put down. So you can imagine him really be able to wind Liam up constantly just for fun, really. So, so that, that's kind of relationship. But, but there's also like, um, there's a love between them as well. But the relationship, creative relationship, is really fantastic because Noel can write these really great songs, really uh, anthemic songs. When you put Liam puts his voice on them, it, it lifts them up to an amazing level because he's such a great singer. He's one of the great British rock and roll singers. His, his voice, he has that attitude of John Lydon. And the always detected very strong overtones of anti-Irish prejudice. They were portrayed as very much the hooligan, um, the battling brothers and all the rest of it. But there was an element there that went back to that 19th century subhuman portrayal of, of, you know, of the Irish as just fighting drunk and all the rest of it. And Oasis did drink a lot, and because they fought and they brawled, it was an obvious link that you could say, oh, that's the Irish in them coming out. Well, I think the association of the Irish as either drunk or stupid, feckless, stupid, are very strong, and those go back in time as stereotypes, and they long preceded, you know, the outbreak of the Troubles in Northern Ireland in the late 60s. So, and I think that they're interwoven with experiences that the majority of Irish immigrants who've come to Britain have tended to be poorer, less educated, um, not, you know, it's, it's quite documented that normally the slightly better off went to the States because they could afford to go. Our own Scriofer, Egg, Paul Brady, um, nothing but the same old story. I was our own lawyer, Farragut, at our own. It's kind of unheard versa. I was just about 19 when I landed on their shore with my eyes big as headlights, like the thousands and thousands that came before. I was going to be something. Well, I was just about 19. When I landed on the shore with my eyes big as headlights Like the thousands and the thousands who came before I was gonna be something Smile at the mind, screwing out on my face As I walked down over the gangway I came down to their city Where I worked for many a year, built a hundred houses must have pulled up a million pints of beer Living under suspicion, yeah Putting up with the hate and the fear on the rise You can see that you're nothing but a murderer Yeah, man, right. We're nothing but a bunch of murderers, yeah. Yeah. Say, hey, Johnny, can't wait till Saturday night Got a thirst that's raging And no place where we can put that right Wash away the confusion Hose down these flames inside, but look out! That's right. I said, look out! Cause I'll tell you what the beat it if you cross me! In Sonora on some tall, on sale, assassin, as ma Higemon Rodigart, sale, a toss as eight ish dark, sale in a wheel, winter my hair and hair size. Get wise, murder her. Um, by ourselves, maybe. I got a brother in Boston. She said, Send me on the fair. Just wrote me a letter. Making out that he's cleaning up out there. Two cars in the driveway. Summer house, we down on the Cape, and I know it fixed me up in the morning. Philip Donnellan's 1966 film, The Irishman Portrait of Exile, showed a lot of Irishmen in 1966 being very critical of the Irish government, very critical of the short-termism of Irish policy. They felt very, very, I think, in a sense it would be to personalise it, to su suggest betrayed. They just felt let down, and the experience of being let down from an Irish, an Irish 
community in England I would be is not necessarily to dwell on it. It's just something that you say, well, that that is the way it is. It's nothing but the same old story. Oh! It's not that long ago in the last century when signs were up, the old uh, Nina signs, the uh, no Irish need apply. It, it, Something's come out of that, that sort of persecution of the Irish in England. Something positive's come out of that. And I think it, maybe it's inspired a generation or several generations of Irish exiles to create positive things and to, to use that hostility that's been against them, use it in a positive way and create something that's powerful and beautiful in pop culture. And I think Morrissey and Marr have done it. I think that the Gallaghers have done it with Oasis. I think Kate Bush did it. I think Costello did it. I think Kevin Rowlands did it as well. And I think John Lydon did it. There's a whole sort of wave of second generation Irish musicians who've created something positive out of something that was incredibly negative. It's only when you link them all together and you think, hmm, there's, there's, a, there's a neuroticism there. There's, a, there's an anger there. There's a conflict going on there. And, you know, the, the, the more of these traits that you, you, you start to look at in, 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 in both the artists and the work that they're producing, um, it becomes something certainly worthy of consideration. And the other ironic thing about this is that most of, of these characters, whether it be Oasis or John Lydon or Morrissey and Marr, are considered to be quintessentially English.